In this final episode of our Haas Lab Tour series, former Pearson Workholding employee, Max, joins us to give us the behind the scenes journey of how the team designs and optimizes their race car year after year. And a bonus tour of some unique facilities the team uses to expand their skill sets. They powder coated this and it gained another eight pounds. Yeah, I was gonna say powder's heavy. But they said, this is a car we want built right and well, and we don't want, we want it to look nice. Yeah. So they could have saved another eight pounds off the powder coat. So the oh. car is one of the lightest cars we ever built. Okay. And there's still places you can take away because yeah. of just a system goal. Sure. Uh, this is one of my, my favorite cars because it, most of it made sense. Yeah. Some chassis, they used to be, so this one's wide at the, at the shoulder mm -hmm. and narrows at the feet. Mm -hmm. Some were weird where it would narrow and then extend open for the suspension pickup uh -huh. points and then narrow again. Okay. But because it narrowed you so close to your knees, you're like, Oh, so interesting. Tight. Wow. So the human ergonomic aspect of it was difficult. Mm. And then carbon fiber intake. Carbon fiber layup. That's awesome. Yeah. It just, uh, so did you 3D print it and then lay up over it? Exactly. Yeah. No, exactly really cool. that. Yeah. Um, wow. It, that was like the 12th try. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's difficult, yeah, right? This yeah. one actually, even this whole, even though this is the best one they made uh -huh. at competition, when it was, uh, the car was backfiring, mm -hmm. this actually caved in a little bit. Really? Just before the last race. Okay. And we were all very terrified. Wow. Did they pull it under vacuum and vacuum bag it and everything? Yeah. Or, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Everything, every composite, carbon uh -huh. fiber, fiberglass uh -huh. is all vacuum bagged at okay. minimum. Got it. In 22, uh, one of the issues was that uh, there was a disconnect on how to build things in reality. So I said, hey, you know, it's 2020. It's, this, this is the 2023 team now. This is 2023. We live in an age where we can do almost anything, especially with 3D printers. Sure. Why don't we stop taking PVC tubes and duct tape? and just three print the nodes so that we can just have them all join together. Then we three print the engine. And actually now before we build the whole car and invest a whole amount of time and resources, we three print the pedal assembly, the steering assembly, um, other uh, parts and packaging in the back for the drivetrain, the suspension. So then we can get a physical representation of, okay, so what does the driver like what position is he gonna sit at mm -hmm. where is the steering wheel in relation to that is he driving like a bus is he gonna be driving like a normal car mm -hmm. do we want him very laid back upright is this front row hoop going to impede him in seeing the cones and his field so this is part of the steps we took to uh bring students back to being in person touching making a real life in-person understanding correlation to what they do. Yeah, I love it. Definitely made small improvements every year. Mm -hmm. Kind of what you taught me yep. all the time. A little continual improvement. Um, because it's very difficult to make huge changes to a program yeah. without understanding how those impacts will affect. Totally. So I'm in the middle right now like of designing a brand new product and we change one thing, it changes, it's a trickle out effect and it changes multiple things downstream of different components. And then you get to that last component, you're like, oh, that would make it really hard to make. We can't do that. So you have to backtrack. So no, I understand the pain. Now, is this full size? This is full size. Okay. So one you, to one. You can actually get in carefully if you really needed to. Um, we don't have the, these, this up. Right? So the PVC tubes can't, can't really move. Right. They're not weight bearing. But um, yeah. when we have the 80-20 extrusions uh -huh. up, you actually can use those as your support bars to get in and out. Got it. And we mount the steering wheel based off of that. And uh, this is not mounted fully, it's just a chassis on the table. Sure, sure. But and it's early in the program, yes. like this year. So, so we can actually make um, these slots, cutouts, mm -hmm. mount them to the table so the chassis will sit exactly where it is on this table. It's awesome. These, the grid on the table is two inch squares. So that's to uh, correlate to an exact XYZ coordinate plane as like SolidWorks or any CAD program. So cool. So everything can be exactly where it is. Yep, love it. Uh, even this is supposed to actually replicate the floor. So uh, we made these uh, I don't know, standoffs, if you will, to see how high the car is off the ground with all the components. Yeah, we made sense. it a year where the under tray was in the floor. 
So let me ask you this, all these nodes are 3D printed now, which is easy. Are these gonna be machined, welded? What do these turn into? How oh, so made? we don't actually um, cut nodes uh, for steel pipes to be welded. We actually notch the tubes and okay. join them at the ends. Okay, yeah, so this is just a way to keep it together. This is not what it would look like. Yes. It would be welded tubes, yeah. yeah. This is all recent too. This was the uh, last year that they did this. was the first year to do it as well as this. Got it. And this that's is cool. the fruition of what it's become. Yeah. It's really great. That's awesome. I love it. Cool. Glad to see it. Thank you. Cool, Max. Well, yeah, I remember this. I haven't been here in so long, but this is like the mechanical room. This is where a lot of the initial ideas get started, or do the students come over here and actually build in this room? Yeah, so this is the college machine shop open to all students but go to Cal State Northridge. Got it. Um, how this works is uh, before students come in here and operate machinery randomly, uh -huh. they take a, a three-day workshop okay. where they go over and learn the basic safety operation of each machine, yep. the do's and don'ts, how the machines operate. Mm -hmm. And uh, we take about 160 students per year uh -huh. through this program. Yeah. Uh, and once they've passed the safety certification uh, for the school, acknowledging that you understand how to use a machine and whatnot, okay. they can then take whatever project they're working on, research-related, uh, instructional, class-related, club, uh, academically-related, sure. and build whatever they need to do. Yeah. Whether it's research for um, promoting certain fields, yep. making a race car, or whatever yeah. it is. It's a workshop. There's about 160 students annually that pass through. They learn to do the manual mills, the lathe. This is kind of where they get their experience in manufacturing. Yeah. Um, this is like where you would you would experience the feel of what an end mill feels like when it enters exactly. a cut. So they, they can tell what shatter means. Yeah. What, what uh, a high wall, a yeah. depth of wall would mean. Right. And if it's a very deep pocket, yeah. uh, what that means in here. Yeah. Um, also when they're drilling holes in the lathe, stuff like that. Sure. CNC here, but the CNCs are used by the staff machinists to uh, operate machines and make parts. So that VF4, was it over in the... That was the one that used to be in the hospital. Okay. And, they and the SC20. Yeah, okay. And then yeah. they have a conversational mill, and I just got this new lathe for the school. Got it. So they can have more students. Nice. That's great. I love it. So this is the Manufacturing Systems and Engineering Management Lab. Um, this is Vetro Byers here. Yeah, this is cool. Wow. So the students build uh, a different set of robots to do a different set of objectives every year. Uh -huh. Keeps things fresh. Yeah. And uh, them exercising their brain and mind. That's awesome. Vetro bots is high school, middle school, college, everywhere. Yeah. It's so fun. they're not like, these are not like battle bots. These no, are, they're completely different. These are different. task bots. They yeah, these something. are task bots, exactly. That's really cool. Battle bots, uh, they'll be cool. Yeah, but, but that's for, for TV. That's for something <laughs> yeah. else. Um, over really cool. here, so we have a Haas TM1, uh -huh. a manual mill, a VF3 with a fifth axis. Wow, okay. Um, a CMM that's currently being worked on. Yep. A manual lathe and the works. Wow. Injection molding, huh. um, uh, thermal forming, and we have casting outside. Injection molding, that vertical is a, mm -hmm. that's a... So it's an injection molding machine, so we teach students uh, through certain coursework, how to make samples, let's see if I can find one. Got some pellets here, that's cool. Yeah, okay. we take poly, uh, I think that's polypropylene. Uh huh. And uh, we can make this one in case is a Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse, like a keychain or something. Mm, yeah, it is a exactly keychain. a keychain. Wow, okay. I just need a, I can make it so. But uh, you can learn how to make a mold, uh -huh. you wanna do injection molding, the runners, and all that stuff for this. Uh, machine. I had no idea something like this existed. Like, I kind of want it now. Yeah, it's, it's a like... low volume uh -huh. um, uh, machine. Yeah. Uh, because it's semi auto back, semi manual. Sure. Um, it's very fast. I've made uh, 300 very quickly in an hour. So, a really easy design would be one of these plates is flat, mm -hmm. like usually like core cavity, that type of thing. One is flat, and then you would machine, you could like 3D machine something and then it's On the other side, yeah. On the other side, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't have any Mickey Mouse samples ready, but... Yeah, uh, but this one, there's a Mickey Mouse face right there. Yes. That's, that's cool, yeah. Uh, so that's a little fun thing we do. But yeah. you learn how to do injection molding. Uh -huh. It's kind of, that's especially something that's not taught a lot. Yeah. Our students don't know how to make 
in terms of design for manufacturing, it's very rare because you, you don't even know what milling is. You have to put in like gates, sprues, all those things to get it to actually flow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and make sure it gets to all the right compartments, it cools properly, or in this case, retains the heat properly. Yeah. yeah. Um, doesn't form any voids in the mold, or in the component, and etc. And you have to experiment. It's different for every different material. Wow. Um, but this is a Morgan press. They make uh, low volume uh, components uh -huh. for your uh, shop or whatever. That's really cool. I love it. Yeah, it's actually built in Long Beach. No way. Yeah. Thermal forming machine. Yep. Uh, I'll try to fix this one up, get it running. But you can essentially put uh, sheets of plastic and mold them to whatever you want. Okay. To All right. Be. Yeah. And then outside, we have sand casting oh, cool. and lost wax casting. Or investment casting. Is this a little mini lathe that's getting? This is a DMG Mori oh, yeah. uh, purchase lathe. Yeah. They bought Gildemeister out. Yeah. Um, what happened was the controller caught fire in 2018. And because of the pandemic, we never gotten to a point to repairing it. Wow. The controller itself. Yes. The machine is uh, low hours and okay. is much more heavy built than most machines. Sure. Yeah. We actually got this, I think, from Hitachi. Hitachi. Okay. Yeah. So this is a Gildemeister, which is the G in what's now DMG Mori, Deco Maho Gildemeister, and then Mori, which is Mori Seiki. So yeah, a lot of history here. That's cool. Yeah. Omar, Max, thanks for the tour. I love seeing it. It's been, it's changed so much since I've been here many years ago. So uh, yeah, thanks so much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Love We're everything early. you're doing and uh, good luck in May. Thank you. It's going to be a top 10 finish. I feel it. Yeah. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> we Great. appreciate all the things you show us around and introduce the students to design for manufacturing and lean and yeah. all those things. It's very important. Super important. Because a lot of the stuff, obviously you told me like it's not taught. So that's like the kind of like the unfortunate this, reality. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's the secret sauce in manufacturing. So. But thank Great. you. All right. Yeah. Thank you. So racing is all about speed. But over on our main channel, I made a whole video debunking the speed myth in shops. And you can check out that video right here. So until next time, go innovate your production.